Thank you for tuning in to Strategy Rewind. I'm your host, Miguel LeBron, and I'm a personal growth strategist. I help individuals think strategically and establish a strategy in order to be able to accomplish their breakthrough moment. And this podcast focuses on the strategies, the tactics, and the mindset necessary for a breakthrough moment. Here's what we need to come to the understanding of. It is that expectation and needs are related, but they're not the same thing. Expectation and needs are related, but they're not the same thing. As a leader, I will often address my team and ask, what do you need from me and what do you expect from me? If you're a leader and you're listening to this, I would suggest you do the same thing. If you're a leader of a big group, small group, it doesn't matter. Just get to your team one by one. Don't do it as a group one by one, make it as personal as possible. Reach this individual one-on-one and ask them, tell me three things that you expect from me and tell me three things that you need from me. This idea originally, I took it from Jesse Cruz's book. Jesse Cruz, who's been on the podcast before, actually has a book where it's called Live Your Dash. And there's a chapter where he talks about actually speaking to his friends and and kind of getting to a place where they can define the needs of this relationship, right? If we're in a relationship together, if we're friends, then there should be a need for this relationship. Otherwise, what, what are we doing here? And in the book, he there's a chapter where he goes into that part and that part of, hey, what, do you, what is it that you expect from me? is what he addresses. But I think it's so important to just ask these three questions, or rather these questions, which is one, what do you expect from me? And two, what do you need from me? Now, the trick is to establish the number three for each one. So it would look like this. If you and I are friends, right? Or maybe I'm your leader, right? In, in a group setting, the one who's leading the charge is me. And I come to you and I say, hey, listen, I want to make sure I give you the best of me and that I can help you grow and do whatever it is that you want to accomplish. Because in parentheses here, and I know I I kind of interrupted myself, but here's one thing you need to understand, leader. The people that are working with you, those people are working with you. And it should be that you should work with them. Now, let me just define this here real quick. They're working with you to bring forth the vision that you have laid out before them. So they've bought into the vision and they're working with you to make that vision a reality. It should be that as a leader, you would reciprocate and you would say, what is your vision? Where do you see yourself in five years, in 10 years? Where do you see yourself and how can I help you in that vision, right? So they're working with you, but you should also reciprocate and work with them for the betterment and the fulfillment of their vision. And for some leaders, unfortunately, they, well, they have a huge ego and they're only focused on their own vision or they lose track of the reality that at the end of the day, you're working with people and these people may have dreams and aspirations and goals and desires that they themselves want to accomplish. It would behoove you to, well, reciprocate that you, that is that they would work with you in accomplishing the vision and goal you've set forward but that at one point or another, you would also look back and say, hey, how can I work with you so that you can accomplish your goals, your dreams? Okay, having said that, I close the parentheses. Let me go back to this scenario. You and I, we're working together. I go to you and I say, hey, I understand you have goals, right? Because you've already had this conversation or I'm leading up to this conversation, right? You may have goals, you may have desires. I want to ask you as the leader, I want to ask you. I want to ask you as the manager, I want to ask you. I want to ask you as the leader, tell me three things that you expect from me and tell me three things that you need from me. Most likely, the individual will say, well, I I don't know, because truly, most leaders don't ask this question. Honestly, most leaders don't ask this question. And so the individual is going to be surprised and you just stay quiet. (laughs) You don't have to say anything. Too often, people go beyond the yes. I learned this from Chris Doe. Chris Doe says, don't go beyond the yes, right? If you are proposing to someone and, you know, you're the guy or you're the person who gets on your knee and you propose, traditionally guys do it, but I know women do it also. So maybe you you decided to say, I'm going to do it. And you get on one knee and you pull out the ring and you say, will you marry me? And the person says, yes. 
automatically the next thing is you put the ring on their finger, you give a hug, you kiss, and you, you have a go on to a great day, start planning out this wedding. But just imagine for a moment if you got on one knee, took out the ring, will you marry me? The person says yes, and you say, now let me tell you why I think you should marry me. I think you should marry me because I love you, because you're smart, because, and you go on this tangent, it's like, they already said yes. You don't have to keep talking. You don't have to keep going. They already said yes. And so going beyond yes is an issue. Oftentimes this happens. And so it's important to know when to shut up. I mean, I don't know how much, Frank, to say it. I, there is a season for everything. There's a time for everything. There is a time for speaking and there is a time to be silent. And in the moment that as a leader, you ask the individual, hey, name three things that you expect from me and name three things that you need from me. This is the moment for you to be silent. This is the moment for you to be quiet. You want to give them the space. They're most likely going to say they're surprised. They're most likely going to say nobody's told them that before. They're most likely going to say, well, you know, needs and expectations. Well, I don't know. They're the same thing. And they are not. This is what you need to interject because they're not. Let me give you an example how needs and expectations are not the same thing. I need air to breathe, and I need that. My lungs require it. My body needs it. I need air. I expect that air to not be poisoned. I expect that air to not be dirty. I expect that air to be clean, right? Now, if the air is contaminated, can I breathe? Sure, sure. But is it the best air? No. No, no, it's not, right? I need air. And if the air is contaminated, sure, you can breathe long term, though it ain't going to be what you want. So another example is I need to eat. I need food. I need it. It's fuel to my body. I need to eat. I expect from there to be no poison in my food. Or I expect that when I sit at the dinner table, if my wife has cooked for me or if we go out to eat, I expect that that food is nourishment to my body, not that it would be poisonous. That's what I expect. Can I eat? Sure. I'm going to take a couple bites and then die. Like <laughs> it did not meet my expectations, even though it fulfilled a need. And so this is why it's important for us to get to a place to define the expectations and the needs. And so there is a responsibility that leaders are failing with. There is a responsibility that leaders are failing with. And it is to ask their people, what do you expect from me? And what do you need from me? And then shut up <laughs> and then be quiet because you want to allow the other individual, the other person, the space to actually tell you. Now, here's the thing. Maybe you say, well, I'm not a leader. I'm not leading a team. I'm not leading a project. I'm not a manager or a shift manager or an assistant manager, or any of those things. Sure. But I'm, I'm certain you may be in a relationship. You may have friends. You may have a, a significant other. You may be engaged or married, or maybe you even have a business partner. And it's time for you to ask the question, tell me three things that you expect from me and tell me three things you need from me. This, this is a real, real conversation. I'm telling you, as a leader, I've had this conversation recently. I've had it more consistently with individuals where I've been asking, tell me three things. What do you need from me? And tell me three things that you expect from me. Heck, after reading Jesse's book, Live Your Dash, which is where I got that idea of the expectation. After having read that book, I went to my wife. I said, tell me what you expect from me. Tell me what you expect from me. And, and we had a conversation. Now, as a leader, I understood, OK, I, I need to be able to get direct to the question, because oftentimes we don't get the answer we want because we don't ask the right question. And so I think three is a, a comfortable number uh, of expectation and of need. And the question is, again, tell me three things you expect from me. Tell me three things you need from me. That has to be a conversation. Again, you may not be the person who is in front as a leader, but if you have a significant other, if you have a, a wife, a husband, if you have a spouse, if you have a, a friend, a neighbor, a cousin, if you're if you if you're a mentor or, 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 you know, you have people that look to you or people that call you, it's beneficial for you to ask. Heck, if you're a son or a daughter and you want to call your papa and your mama, <laughs> right, or you want to raise you want to call the person who raised you and say, hey, tell me what you expect from me and tell me what do you need from me? 
Because oftentimes as sons and daughters, we have all these expectations and all these things that we need and want from our parents, but rarely do we ask them, hey, what do you expect from me? And what do you need from me as a son? What do you need from me to do as, as a husband, as, as, a, as a father, as a brother? This is a conversation my brother and I have had several years back where just really the expectations did not lined up. And you know what? Ownership is on me. It was my fault. You know, when we before we got married, uh, before I got married, my wife and I got married. He's married also. We've both been married. He, well, let me rephrase these sentences. Goodness gracious. My brother has been married for uh, over 10 years. I have been married with my wife for over 10 years. And that phase in our lives for my brother and I was very, um, you know, it was uncharted territory. And one of the things was that we were always hanging out before, you know, before he got married and before I got married. And, well, you know, there was these things of redefining expectations. And to be honest, I didn't do a good job. I didn't do a good job of redefining expectations. Let me be more specific. I didn't do a good job of actually understanding his expectations. And so one day, you know, he called me out and we had a conversation. And he said, listen, I need it to be that when I call you, you answer or when you text or when this and that. And we, we've we been at a point over the years where we've gotten better and that's not to say that we don't have, you know, siblings situations. If you have a sibling, brother or sister, you know what it is, right? You're always going to have some type of up and down. And that's happened. But we've always come back to the middle and say, OK, here's the expectation, open communication. All right. And in the, in the interest of this expectation, here's how I feel. Here's what I think. And we always bring it back to that. So, again, if you're listening and you may be saying, I'm not a leader. Well, OK, you can still put this into action with your significant other. Let me just say this. You can also put this in action with the person in the mirror. You can put this in action with you. What do I expect from me? And what do I need for me to do? What is it that the person that I want to be 10 years from now needs from me? What do they expect from me? Because I believe that every 10 years you should be reinventing yourself. Or you should be in a different position 10 years from now. And if you look back, you should be in a different position from where you were 10 years ago. But that starts with defining expectation and defining needs. When you set a goal, it's very easy to just say, well, I want to set this goal and that's it. You have to define the needs and define the expectations. I want to go ahead and start doing X, Y, Z. Okay, what do you expect once you start doing this? And what do you need in order for this to take place? Expectations and needs. It's a powerful conversation, and I think we need it now more than ever. So get to the person that you are close to. Get to the person that you love, that loves you. Get to the person that needs you, that you need. Get to the people in your circle because it's important that you surround yourself with people that would nourish your vision. And it's important that not only would you work towards your breakthrough moment, but that you would ask the people around you, hey, what do you need? What do you expect from me so that you can have your breakthrough moment? Needs and expectations. It's a powerful conversation. Today's conversation was necessary, and I believe it's pivotal in your journey. But the question is, what's next? Where do you go from here? The next step is for you to set up a free 30-minute strategy session. Head over to MiguelLeBron.com or click on the link in the show notes. It's necessary for you to take all of the things you've learned and apply them so that you can have a breakthrough moment.